This recording will be up much later tonight for you to review. Here is my 2B pencil. Here is my ballpoint pencil. Here is, all right, and I'm actually gonna turn on the overhead drawing as well. All right, so this is going to be your homework. What I want you to do is first, let's go over how you hold your pencil. Grab your pencil for me and hold it up in front of your camera. However you hold your pencil. This is how I write with my pencil. Hold it up in front of your camera, quick, there you go. Quick, it's not that hard, you can do it. There you go, all right. This is really great for tiny little adjustments. Look at this, I can write my name, I can sign my name super small like this, right? I can write English extra small with this. Um, this is a really dull pencil, super dull pencil. It actually needs to be a lot sharper than this. Um, this is not how you hold a pencil for drafting or drawing. For drafting or drawing, it's really easy, whether you're right or left-handed, and I'll do it both ways. Uh, have your hand face up like so. Put your pencil in the crotch between your thumb and your finger. Whatever feels most comfortable, move that finger in, one of these two. Move that finger in and rest it on the knuckle. In order to do that, you're going to have to pinch down with your fingers a little bit. If you've ever eaten with chopsticks, this is very familiar because this is how you hold one of the chopsticks. Um, for me, I alternate actually between this finger and this finger. So, boom. Literally, to do it right, make a gun, put it here, balance it, and let gravity hold it. Close your thumb. You're good to go. You can do with this finger whatever you want. You can lock your thumb in place. You can play around with it. You can pick your nose, whatever. It doesn't matter. What this does is make a basic right angle between the pencil and your arm. Also what it does is that you can move your pencil and basically turn it on and off by on and off by pronating your arm. Do you see how I'm rotating my actual arm? Now what I'm not doing is drawing with, now watch this, my hand is laying on the paper and I'm drawing with my pencil. And I'm drawing with, do you guys see how like there is no movement happening from the wrist up? It's all these. If you draw that way, your hand is gonna cramp up. It's gonna become a claw and it's gonna hurt a lot. And it's going to feel like you need to draw that way all the time. For, the, for this entire exercise, it's about defeating that feeling. So make a gun, put it in there, close your thumb and you're ready to go. Now what you need to do is that you can draw using any muscle or connection point or rotation from here back. Ideally, you're either sitting in a chair with your feet flat on the ground with your the desk at about what is natural elbow height for you so that you can rest your elbow or even better you're standing and your arm is hanging from your shoulder we'll go over this a lot and instead of drawing from your hand what you're going to do is you're going to draw from your arm i am drawing my elbow is not resting on the ground right now I am actually using a little bit of pressure from my finger and I have a death grip with my thumb because I haven't done this in a long time. Um, but here's the other thing that's really important. I wanna show you guys this. I'm drawing with the pencil like this to the page, not like this, but like this, all right? This works whether you are right or left-handed. And when I'm drawing, I'm, I'm almost ambidextrous, but holding it this way. And again, actually, if this is really hard for you, take your non-dominant hand and do the same exact thing in your non-dominant hand. Because even in your non-dominant hand, you have really good muscle control of all of the major muscle groups in your core. You don't have good muscle control in these tiny little muscles of your non-dominant hand. So if you're really feeling stuck, actually switch to the harder hand. It will strangely be easier and allow you to focus on what you're doing because your muscles just aren't as strong over here. So they won't feel like they need to take over. And here's what you're gonna do. If you're left-handed, you start from the left and you move to the right. If you're right-handed, you start from the right and you move to the left. If you have a big uh, portrait piece of paper like this, you're actually gonna turn it and you're gonna start up here. You're gonna try to make a circle that's as big as what your finger looks like when your finger and your thumb meet. So that big guys, 
All right. Remember, we're not doing sketchy sketch. This is what sketchy sketch is. That's not, that's, that's not, that's a beautiful line, but that's not drawing. All right. And what we're going to do, feet flat on the ground, equidistant away from yourself, approximately the width of your shoulders. Deep breath in, breath out. Elbow floating just off the table, hanging from your shoulder from the top. Start, work your way slowly down. Allow your hand to just float on the page. Work it up almost to where it finishes. And then, this is the key, about as far off as you can manage, maybe a millimeter, an eighth of an inch off. Coming back down, kissing the bottom of that circle, and then an eighth of an inch this way, up. Now, it should take you five breaths to draw the circle, maybe more. If you're doing it less than that, you get in, you'll actually get into a rhythm. So if you get into a rhythm where it's like one, two, this is not it, you're not doing it. If you feel your body starting to pulse forward and backwards, that's not it. If you're doing it right, you should actually be able to start to be aware of feeling the heartbeat in this vein across your finger, if you're doing it right. If you're sweating too much, you know, dry off your hands, but it should be slow. You should actually be able to see, I'm gonna zoom in here, guys. You should be able to see your heartbeat showing up. You guys see that right there? See that divot and that divot? That's the blood circulating through my hand, moving the pencil imperceptibly. Now, I have a lot more practice doing this than you do. No, none of these circles are perfect circles. It's not about making a perfect circle. What it is about is making a circle and trying to make another circle in a spiral just off of it and then just off of it and then just off of it. But rather than making them as one, two, three, four like that, what you're doing is in a continuous circle. What you want to do is to keep them that big the entire way across. What I don't want you to do is to draw a cheating line. What I don't want you to do is to do them quickly what you're gonna find is that they're going to get smaller. They're gonna get skinny. If they're getting skinny, you need to slow down. If they're getting wobbly shaped, you need to figure out, it. each circle is gonna give you feedback on what to do with the next one. I will expect that you can make it about a third to a half way across the page. Pause, take a look at it and see what it's telling you. For this exercise, I really recommend listening to music. It's meditative. For some of these drawing exercises, we're actually gonna be watching video clips. But work your way, and I'm gonna do this way too fast, work your way across. If it starts to get spread out like that, you're going too fast. If it starts to bunch up on itself, you're going too slow. If it starts to get oblong, you're moving your arm in and out too much. If it starts to get wide, and egg-shaped, you're flattening out. Just use your hand. There is no right or wrong, there's just better or worse. Let me zoom back out to my face. There is no right or wrong, there's just better and worse, okay? But this is a measure of patience. Brand, you're gonna hate this exercise. You're gonna think that it was imagined to torture you. Uh, it's not. The sketch is actually autobiographical. This is the first writing exercise. It's approximately 500 words, except that's how much pencil you're putting on the page. If you're using a pencil, you're gonna need to sharpen it frequently. If you're using a ballpoint pen, it's actually way less forgiving. I recommend starting here with the friction of a 2B. We'll talk about how to photograph them. We'll talk about what utopias, dystopias, and the five points of architecture are, how to photograph your drawings and how to upload them next Monday at two o'clock. This will be the shortest class that we have all semester. If you guys have questions, you can follow up with me on GroupMe. I will record, uh, we've recorded this. 
I will cancel, I'll stop recording now and post it and share the posts with a private link on through GroupMe on YouTube uh, later. And